Hallelujah. Look where he has brought Israel from. He shall extend his hand, his yacht, Yoshua, Hamashiach, unto the four corners of the earth to procure back unto him that which is his beloved, who he loved, who has a great compassion, a concern for those that he has scattered abroad throughout the nations of the earth, and he shall be the one that reconstitute and regroup his people that they may be the viable entity that he had planned for Yisraya from the beginning. So we have much to rejoice for Yisraya, the simplicity of his Torah as he brings light or his score, the wisdom of understanding of what is written in the book. There are so many questions today that man, because of the delusion of his own heart, there is no confidence or trust in anything that is righteous. So there's always a doubt and a question because the heart of man is deceitful above all things and it is desperately wicked. That's why it must draw from the cyst, from the well of the knowledge of the Torah. There's one thing that Yah has done. He has imparted, he has written the Torah in the bosom of Yisrael. We greet you all that have joined us on the live broadcast here at Umat Teshua, the Shua Victory Community. We greet you all in the blessed name of your Shua. Hamashiach. I do want to teach a simple lesson tonight. I think it's vital. It is important. I think that our minds must be refreshed by renewing or stirring up that which has been poured out from the well of Omariah. Because it is the simple things that we tend to negate and forget because we simply do not pay attention to the simple things. It is vitally important that we began to pay attention to those things that we do not believe that it is of great value and great worth. And it is the smallest of the elements that cause the cog or the wheel uh, not to rotate in the order that it should. And that's why it is the small things in our minds uh, do not cause us to operate in the simplicity of the Torah. It is not a complex book. It is not complex at all. Uh, it was written that we as a nation of people would understand. And Yah says, because he has sent Yoshua HaMashiach, he said, it is vitally important that the Ruach HaChodesh, the Spirit of Yah, be poured out among Yisrael. And the Ruach of Yah is his mind of wisdom to speak unto the bosom of Yisrael with a liveliness. That's what the Ruach does. It quickens, it causes the power of the Torah and the delight of the Torah to come alive. Now we know that we have this synthetic form of a spirit that many call, quote, the Holy Ghost, unquote, but it does not operate in the directives that your command and your sure spoke of that the Ruach HaChodesh would operate in Yisraya, there is a powerful mindset that is operated by demonic powers, and Shaul talks about that. I, I want to instruct us in that in a moment. He talks about that mind, whereby it is contrast to the mind of the Ruach. And if we do not have the mind of the Ruach HaChodesh, that is the liveliness of the mind of God, that's why he poured out his Ruach Yisraya, that it would cause that which is written in the bosom of Yisraya to come alive. And then we rejoice in it. We are glad because uh, it, is, uh, it is the acknowledging or the acknowledgement of Yah of the, Brit, the, the covenant that he has written uh, with our forefathers. And so when the Ruach caused that to come alive by what uh, has been spoken out of the volume of Yah's love, uh, that it caused us as a nation to have take the hope of the promises uh, that are written in the Torah of Yah. I want to illustrate tonight. And that we may understand this thing that uh, we see that is poured out among the masses of the people. It is not the Ruach of Yah. Yeah. And they began to utter these, this, this, ba 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 sha, po, 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 po. That's not of Yah. I want to direct our attention, first of all, to the book of Ephesus, Ephesians. Ephesians, Yah, chapter 2. I want to show you the power of the Ruach of Yah in the comparison to the spirit 
whereby many declare that it is the living Ruach of Yah, but it is not. This is what Shaul says here in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. He tells us, And you has he higher, has he quickened. He has made us alive. What has he quickened? What has he made alive? Was not it the power of the Ruach that went down into the belly of the earth and quickened your sure Hamashiach? Is he the Torah? Is he the word of Yah? So it must make alive to revive us, to restore us unto the power of life in the Torah that we constitute the health and the wealth of Omar Yah. Not this vile nature that we see that many are calling the Ruach of Yah, but it is not the Ruach of Yah. It is a spirit, but it is not the Ruach of Omar Yah. He has, first of all, Yisrael. He has Chaya. He has restored the power in Torah's life unto Yisrael. Because it was one thing about the letter of the Torah, it, bring, it brought death swiftly. It brought death. The letter... Killeth, but it is the ruach or the power of life of Torah that gives substance and revive Yisra'ah and bring us back to the bosom of Yah that we delight and rejoice in His presence. Then our hearts are filled with great delight and we are comforted by His speech unto us as any child would. It's avat so the ima they will be comforted by that. So Yisraya, he has haya, he, he, he has caused the power of the substance of Torah of life to be sustained in us. He says, we who, now listen, now this is vitally important, uh, who we were ashamed, we were in trespasses, uh, we were guilty of the offense of Omar Yah. And we know what trespasses or the trespassing it is, the shame. For sin is the trespassing of Torah. When you are found guilty according to the Torah of Omar Yahweh, you have shame. You have trespassed. You are guilty of that offense against Yah. There is a blame infraction against Yah. But what the Ruach does, it quickens us. It higher, it makes us alive to the, to, to the beauty of the Torah. And it sustains the life of Torah in us, the breath of the mind of Yah. That's what his Ruach is. It is his mind in Yisra'ya. And the mind of Yah is not a willing participant in any kind of sin that, uh, that, that de destroys his integrity. So it is the Ruach of Omar Yah that has made us alive. As it did with Yahshua, it was the power of the Ruach. It was the power of his life, the living mind of Yah, the living wisdom of Yah. That is what the Torah is, Yisra'ah. That's why there is a blatant offense against it. That's why the world is blatant against the Torah of Yah. That's why many would tell you that was done away with Yahshua. It was what Yahshua did. He brought the power of the life of Torah revealed unto us. And he said, I cannot leave you comfortless. You don't understand the substance of Torah. He said, I will pray to the Abba and he will send the Ruach HaKodash. And the thing that I've spoken, the Ruach shall bear witness and cause that to come alive in us. It is vitally important that we be filled with the Ruach of Omar Yah. Hear what Shaul says. He said, we were trespasses and sin. Wherein now this is vital to us. Wherein, in time past, I want you to understand the contrast between the Ruach of Yah, the Holy Ghost, and the spirit of this age. In time past, we walk or we halak, our desire, our passion was according now. The way we walk was according to the course of this Olam. According to the mandate and the dictate, we know that first of all, that the Ruach always guide Yisra'ah. We will get into that, all right? 
But in time past, we walk according uh, to the prince or according uh, to the course of this world. He gives us great insight here. He said, according, we oblige, we are delighted in that according to the prince of the power of the air. Now, this is vital here, the next two words. The spirit that now works in the children of marah, of disobedient. Now, it's one thing that the ruach of Yah does. It does not disobey the mandates of the Torah. When you find one speaking against the Torah of Yah, that individual is walking according uh, to the spirit of the prince of the powers uh, of the air. And those that have been filled with their little ta 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 ta, ra pa pa pa, bu pu pu bu shu pu ta ta, they are children of disobedience. When one disobeys Torah, when one defies the Torah of Yah, it is of the spirit of the prince of the power of the air. We as children, as a nation, we all walk in disobedience. It is one thing that the Ruach never does. It cannot disobey the Torah. It is the life of the Torah of Almighty Yah, Yisrael. So when you find this mindset today that constantly purports that you don't have to obey the Torah, it is not the Ruach of Yah. It is not. It is contrast. To what uh, Yeshua said the operative power of the Ruach would be. He gives us insight of that, Yisraya. I will read that in a moment here. But he lets us know, Shaul lets us know here, that it is the prince of the powers of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of Marah. And that mind is a mind of rebellion as it rebels against Yah. It resists what the Ruach speaks, Yisraya. It defies it with all blatant. It is a blatant mind. It is a mind that speaks adamantly and blatantly against the Torah of Yah. It is a mind of disobedience. The Torah is the wisdom. It is the mind. It is the conscience. It is what develops everything. And so Yah has not given us a ruach, a spirit, that calls us to blatantly defy the Torah of Almighty Yah. And if that mind does that, it rejects your sure Hamashiach. We must understand the very power of the prince of the power of the air. He is a prince, he is a czar. And he works in the element of those or the unseen things, Yisrael. They are those that have power, they have strength to manipulate, to maneuver within this olam without being detached. That's why detected. That's why the Ruach is vital in this hour that we are in, Yisraya. We must be filled with the Ruach HaKodash. We were children of Marah, disobedient. We rebel, we reject it. We resisted the Torah of Yah. And that mind, we know that that is contrast to what Yahshua said that when the Ruach Hamad were doing. I want to show us this quickly. Here in the book of Yakahanan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The promise of Yah's Ruach, the book of John. His breath, the wind, the mind of Yah, the mentality, the spiritual reality of Almighty Yah. The Ruach of Yah always does one thing that it does. It, it always makes us alive to cause us to become animated in the Torah of Yah. It is the Torah of Yah that brings the substance of riches unto Yisrael. Because when they obeyed Yah, then the riches were granted unto them. He gave them land and houses that there were none barren among them. The wise produced babies and there were riches. They had cattle and land. He gave them much, Yisra'ya. They were not subservient unto a nation or the heathens goem, but they were servants of the Most High. That's why he commanded unto Levi that out of that tribe shall be the ministers of the Torah of Yah. 
You shall be filled with the Ruach. You shall have the power of the Ruach. And the only way you will understand the power of your mind, it is a deliberate effort and a continuance in studying what the Torah of your commands. Yoshua sure speaks in the book of Yokohanan. He speaks of this Naha, a Nahol, Naha, a guide. He speaks to us, Yisrael, here in Yokohan 16 and verse 7. 16, John chapter 16, verse 7. Is this important? He says, nevertheless, I speak out of the volume of the truth. I tell you the truth. We are constantly reminded what the truth is as we uh, constantly uh, look upon what David says in Tehillim Psalms 119, verse 142, and then 150 to 153. We know what the truth is. It is the administration of the Torah of Yah, his statutes, his laws. Uh, what he has written unto Yisra'ya, that their mind will be governed by the same stimulation that governs the mind of Yah. And what he does, he breathes upon that and calls that living Torah to be alive in us, whereby we don't have to go and look for it. It is written in the bosom of Yisra'ya. He said, nevertheless, I tell you, I speak out of the volume of the Torah. I tell you the truth. He said, it is the most vital, it is expedient, it is the most important thing for you, Yisraya. It is vital to you that I go away, that I depart from you. Because if I do not depart, then you will not experience the magnitude of the mind of Yah. He says, it's important that I go away, for if I do not go away, then he identifies the Naham, the comforter. Will not come to you. The word come, it will not boo. It will not enter in. It will not proceed to enter into the mind, the hearts, into the substance of the inward parts of man. He said, if I go not away, then the ruach, the comforter, the nocham, the mind of Yah that comforts us in the midst of our Zara great trials of tribulation and agony of oppression and depression. Because it speaks or it brings the life, the beauty of Torah. That we know we can have confidence in Almighty Yah. In time past, we walk according to the prince of the power of the air, children of disobedience. Now the Ruach of Yah never guides us to disobey the Torah of Yah. Those that are disobeying what the Torah commands, and they are children, uh, and they have been ordained by the prince of the power of the air. Yeshua goes on to speak to us here. He said that the comforter will not come. He said, but if I depart, I will send him to you. And he gives us great wisdom here. He says, and when he is boo. When he enters in, when he comes into one's love, when he enters into one's love, when he come, he will convict. He will yacha. That's what he says, he will convict. He will decide. The Ruach, the mind of Yah will make judgment. It's decision according to the Torah. It does not make decisions according to the application of our sensual delight. But he will convict. He will convict. That is the first thing the Ruach does. He will convict. He will convict. He will judge us. He will reprove us. The Ruach, the man of Yah, will reprove us. In the midst of all of our agony. The man will reprove us. It will rebuke us. It will chasten us. It will correct us. Because you cannot have the power of the prince of the air or the powers of the air dwelling in you and the power of the ruach. You cannot. The power of Hashatan commands us to disobey Yah. And we're children of disobedience. But the ruach of Yah, it brings us to the beauty of judgment. It corrects us. It convinces us of the world of sin. It shows us our hatah, the vile nature. That we have walked in, we have transgressed, Yah. We have defied the Torah of Almighty, Yah. 
in our disobedience. You cannot have the ruach of Yah and disallow or disavow what the Torah says. You cannot, Yisrael, you have the spirit of the prince of the powers of the air. And it calls you to walk in disobedience. That's why Yahshua says unto us, you need no man to judge you. For the Ruach is a constant reprover. It constantly corrects us. Chastises us. And shows us the air according to yours. Judgment, not ours. Because my judgment is based upon sensual and fleshly things. I want to see the best for you, the best for you, the best for you. And so uh, uh, my, my approach may be different than what the Ruach is. I will, my friend. Hallelujah. He will convict. He will, he will judge us, uh, correct us. Uh, because of the world of sin. Uh, and of sadiqa, of the righteousness uh, of Yah. And of judgment. That's what the Ruach does. It corrects us according to Yah Sadiqa. That we said there in Tehillim. For your Sadiqa is an everlasting ulam. Vi'at. Everlasting Sadiqa. And your Torah is Ha'imat. It is the truth. It is the counsel of Yah. That's what truth is. It is Yah's ability to counsel our minds. It is Yah's strength to bring us to counsel or the Musra, his correction. To establish the witness and the power of the testimony of Yahshua. That there's a liveliness of his name in us, uh, his ruach, his, his, his consciousness in us as a nation of people. Now we know who our Yahshua, our deliverer is, Yisraya. It is vitally important. To understand that and to know that uh, and to relish that and to take confidence in that as a nation unto Yah. It is vitally important for us to understand that, Yisra'ya. He goes on to say, he says now of chata, of sin, what? He said he must reveal and correct our sins. Uh, he says, uh, because, uh, because they believe not on me. Because we did not believe the counsel of Yah. We did not believe the very eduth, the testimony, the edah, the power of his testimony. And we still struggle with that, Yisraya. But the Ruach HaKodash, it would always correct us in that nature or that matter. Because we have not the testimony, we have no power of the life of Yah in us. We have not the witness of your shoe. I don't care how well you may speak what's in the Torah. It doesn't mean anything at all, Yisraya. It has no value, it has no substance. It does not bring alive the power of Torah. And we need that against this, uh, this foe that is formable against us. We need the Ruach HaKodesh. That's why I must constantly reprove sin. It must cleanse out the sin. It constantly judge us, it constantly reprove us. You can't be a lion so you have the Ruach of Yah. You cannot lie and validate lies and say you have the Ruach. You cannot take a, a, a consolation and lies and say you have the Ruach. No. That is the nature of the prince of the power of this Olam. He was a liar, he was a murderer, a liar. You can't do that. You cannot. The spirit of Shekha, of deception and lies and deceit. Whereby you practice that, something is... Drastically wrong. It is the power of the prince. Of the power of the air of this world. That's what it is, Yisraya. Can I, can I move on? I shall. Hallelujah. Greetings again to you that have joined us. Hallelujah. It says of righteousness in verse 10, Yachahana, and John 16, 10. Of righteousness, we must have the sadiq. The righteousness of Yah, that is the assurance of his, uh, of his living substance in us. His righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And his Torah is the truth. He says of righteousness because I go to my Abba and you see me no more. We must do things righteously. There is no way we have any righteousness unless it is according to the mandate of the Torah of Yah. There is no way we can do right by Omadi Yah. There is no way we can bring the offerings of Yah according to every precise 
precision of his Torah. That is why Yoshua greater is he that is in us. That the power of the prince of the power of the air of this world. That we can operate and manifest according to all that is written in the Torah. Every word of Yah is pure Yisra'ah. He cannot annul anything that is written at all. He does not change at all. Therefore we sons of Yahab, we are not consumed. He changed not. <clears throat> We don't have to go to the right or the writings of the Levi and to find out uh, our opposition or our sin against Yah. It is the power of the rock that points it out uh, according to the written tablet uh, of, of our hearts. Uh, he points it out. He doesn't speak of what uh, he persists uh, or he assures us into. He speaks of what you assure the power of that testimony. He brings witness unto that. We can't deny that. And this thing they call the spirit today, it is not the Ruach of Yah. He never disobeyed the Torah, he says, of righteousness, because I go to my bar. He said, and you see me no more. Verse 11, he said, of Mishpat, of judgment. It must constantly, again, he uses this word of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. He is already condemned. He is Russia, he is wicked, he is guilty of all of the infraction. And so he says uh, the Ruach, it will always bring to us judgment. Because it reminds us whether we're walking according to the prince of the power of the air in a spirit of disobedience against the Torah of Yah. We have no wisdom of Yah without Torah. We cannot reject that, and that is why the power of the Ruach of Omar Yah, it quickens, it makes alive what Yah has written in the bosom of Yisrael. You cannot write the testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach in your heart. Yah has taken upon that responsibility. Even before the earth was ever formed, he has written it in the bosom of Yisrael. And he knew that the constant, uh, you brought your offering today, and then you offer up and you sin tomorrow. And then there was only one time a year, day of atonement, uh, that you brought the offering and all of your sins were atoned. And so he atoned for us daily through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. Uh, that we are not reminded of those sins and they're not constantly upon us as a burden, uh, as an oppression. Uh, what you have done yesterday, I don't care what it was. Uh, we move forward in the Ruach of Almighty Yah. Yeah. That's what we do. Uh, he's letting us know that the prince is already condemned. He is already judged. There is no reprieval for him at all. Uh, the powers of darkness have already judged. Uh, and he sends the Ruach and empowers us with that. Uh, that we will not walk in that spirit of disobedience. Uh, because we know the consequences of that Yisrael. He is Sadiq. Everything he speaks is righteous. Everything that Yah speaks unto us. It guides us uh, to have a greater compassion and a love for him. That's what it does. And the Ruach does not turn us away from Yah. It does not turn us away from His mitzvah. It causes us to embrace everything, He says. It is the liveliness of Yah's mind. It is His breath. It is what causes us to come alive, Yisrael. That's what the Ruach is. It is the mind of Yah. That's why Shaul says, let the same mind. Just be filled with the Ruach HaKodash. All right? Of judgment because the prince of this world is already judged. And then he informs them, I have yet many things to say to you. He said, but you cannot even bear the weight of them now. Hallelujah. So he said, I will bring revelation in different types of progressive formats. That as you walk with me, you will grow and understand the power of the Ruach of Omar. He said, if I tried to pour it all on you now, you could never comprehend it. It will cause you to become delusional. He never allows uh, an oppressive weight to be upon us that we cannot bear that Yisra'ya. Everything that we encounter, everything, everything, it is the will of Almighty Yah. He has ordained it. Everything, everything Yisra'ya. We count it all joy we fall into the trials of temptations and the agony of Almighty he of hell. For it is the hand of Almighty Yah, Yisra'ya. So that's why we can rejoice in it and be exceedingly glad. 
We should not think that these are strange things that are happening unto us. As though some strange thing has, has come upon us. This is the will of Yah. We know that everything that we encounter, we know that all things work for the top of them. That love Yah and those that are called according to his purpose. We know that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13. He gives us another informative tidbit. He says, I want you to understand when he, the Ruach of truth. Now, how do you know what is truth uh, unless you have revelation of the Torah of Yah? What is the Ruach going to speak? You cannot define truth but by what was written before Yahshua spoke this. You cannot have an insight of what truth is uh, unless you go back to the Bereshit, uh, to the prophets, the testimony. You must go back. You must, Yisraya. He says, how be when he, the Ruach of truth. He is the power, he is the mind, the Ruach is the mind of truth. It is the breath, it is the life of Yah. It is like parents producing a, a sibling. Their life, their DNA is the composition of the child. That's what it is. It is their breath. It is their life. You cannot take two dead individuals and produce anything. You cannot take a dead plant and produce something of life. We were dead in trespasses in sin. That's what Shaul said. It was a death that was a, a, it was a vicious death upon us. It was tremendous death. And when the Ruach of Truth is come... He says he will, he will guide. And there's one thing that the Ruach does, it governs us. It governs us. It teaches us. It inspires us. It moves us along the course of the Torah of Yah. It directs us. It straightens us out according to what? Not of the things that the Ruach knows or the eyes of Yah sees, but according, uh, according to the things that the eye of Yah sees, or his eyes, or the light you sure see. But according uh, to the writing of the Torah that is already in the bosom of Yisraya. When he come, when the Ruach, he will, he will guide us. It will be the power of Yah's influence upon us. He supervises, the Ruach supervises every action, every deed, every word. That's why we are warned that we're going to be judged by every word of no substance, of shav, of vanity, every idle word that we speak. We're not getting by Yisrael. Yoshua said, I must go. It is, the, it is of urgent. He did not say, he said, it is expedient. It is of urgency. It is of the foremost thing that I go away. I must go. I must enter back into the kingdom upon the seat whereby the Father has for me. Because the Ruach must come. The Ruach of Yah must be poured out among Yisrael in a vital way. It must be. He said that the Ruach is coming. He will guide you. Listen now. He will supervise you. He will naha. He will guide you in some of the truth or all the truth. We must define truth. These beasts today, they don't know what truth is. He guides us into all truth. I know, I'm going to read it again, Yisraya. It's vital. Because this is a foolish generation. And they're fools that are trying to handle the Torah of Yah. Yeah. And they're fools. They have no substance of knowledge or wisdom. Yeah. Daweed says here in Tehillim Psalm 119. He says, your Daba is very, not just pure or tahoa, clean and pure. Nothing to contaminate it. 
He said, your word is very pure. Therefore, your evet, your servant, uh, has a great love for it. He says, I am so small. What am I? That you will send a truth like this. I am small uh, and despise. Uh, he said, yet in all of that, in all of the great agony, I do not forget your precepts. I do not forget your ordinance, your limitations, your restraints. He says, it is your sadiqa, your righteousness. He uses the words, Ulam vi'at. it is everlasting. It is of antiquity. It never ceases. It never has anything uh, to slow the pro progress. It is an everlasting righteousness. And he says, and thy Torah, your law, is ha'imat. It is the truth. It is the truth. He said, although trouble and anguish have taken hold of me, yet my, thy commandments are my delight. Although there's an argument, the prince of hell rise up against me. But it is your mitzvah. That is my hafetz. It is your mitzvah that creates my pleasure and the will to do your will. It is the mitzvah of Yah that generates our hafetz, the pleasure, the will to do the will of Yah. Although we're in agony, Yisrael. Although we have pain, it is what he has given unto us, written in our bosom. Isn't he great? Only y'all can do that. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? He, we are creatures out of the dust. But even the scientific mind knows that we all, as far as the DNA, it's all, only y'all can do that. He's even allowed them to have limited even knowledge of that. They won't give him the praise. Not at all. Let me move quickly a little further here. He says uh, in verse 144, he says, You're Sadiq. The righteousness of your testimony is everlasting. It doesn't change. It is Ulam. What is the testimony of Yah? The Torah that he granted and he gave unto Yisrael at his, as he brought them out of, out of great bondage. He said, Give me understanding of being, wisdom to discern, to know. Uh, and I shall hire, I shall live with strength, I shall rejoice in the wisdom of the Torah. And that's why the rock of Yah, it quickens and makes us alive. In the Torah, he asked Yah, give me life. He was alive. He was, give me your testimony. It is an everlasting, give me understanding and I shall live. That's what the Ruach does, it gives us understanding of the judgment, of the discipline of the Torah of Almighty Yah. It speaks the testimony from the bosom of Yisra'ya. And we delight and we rejoice in that Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. That we said, I cry with my whole heart and Yah heard me. I will keep your statutes. I will keep your hook, your ordinance, your limitations. I cried unto you, save me, your shack. I shall keep your edah, your testimony, the, 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 the wisdom of your power, the wisdom of your grandeur and your great strength, Yah. I prevented the dawning of the morning and I cried, I hope. In your word, he said, I didn't even see when the dawn of morning came. Because of the tears, I cried, my voice, I cried unto you. He said, my eyes prevented the night watch. I didn't even watch in the night watch because I was consumed that I may meditate in your Torah, in your Dabai, your word, your promises, your promises, your promises, Yah. He says, hear my voice according unto your love kindness, your hasset, O Yah. And then he uses the word, does it say quicken? Does it say quicken? Make me alive according uh, to what? That's what the Ru'ak does. It gives us life according to the mispot of Almighty Yah. I will prove it out, Israel. Yah. Make me alive. Quicken me according to your judgment, Yah. That's why this vow thing that they call the Holy Ghost is a vow thing. It's a spirit of disobedience. It is the power of hell. It is not the power of Yah. It is the mind of Hoshotan. That's why it's prevalent in every wicked house it is. They draw night that follow after unclean a mischief. 
They are far from your Torah. See, they draw not. They fall off to every kind of mischief, mischief, every kind of sadistic thing. Why? Because they are far removed from the Torah of Yah. That's why Yahshua said, it is important that I go. For if I don't go, then the Ruach, you need the Ruach, Yisra'ya. He says, you are near, O Yah. And then he says, all thy commandment, your mitzvah, are truth. Is that what he says? Did he say all of your commandments is truth? Did it, does it say in Yachachanan, John, uh, chapter 6, 16, where I was reading? Uh, let me find this quickly. It's one verse here that I'm looking for. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. 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 That's all right. Hallelujah. Where did I stop, Yisra'ya? Okay, Yakahan 16, 13. How be it when he, the Ruach of Torah, truth is come, he will guide you into what? Oh. All truth. Did he not say that, uh, did he not say here in verse 150, 151 that you are near Yah? He said, oh Yah, and all thy what? Commandments are what? Our truth, Yisrael. This is a twisted generation. They're trying to deduct things according to their convoluted, perverted mind. It will not happen that way. Ruach of your leads and guides us, Yisraya. He said, concerning you, I have known of all that thou hast founded them for how long? Ulam the Ed. I wanted to establish that because I want, to, I want you to get a little something tonight, all right? To cause your you shot your breath to be fattened at the breath. To feel your shot. All right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the ruach, when one has the ruach of truth, he guides. The ruach always nacha. It governs us. It causes our minds to be disciplined and governed. It supervises us, Yisra'ya. And it is, it is the power of Yah to, uh, to, to give us wisdom of the things uh, that Yah mandate for us to do, uh, that we do it with care until it is all finished. Yahshua said, it is finished. And he gave up the Ruach, did he not? Until the end. So it must be finished, Yisra'ya. It must be finished. He will guide us into all truth. Call the voice and truth came out of the voice of Yah. Did it not? Did not every word that Yah speak, whole voice, all? It is both the same. All voice. And everything he spoke was the truth. Did he lie one time? By the power of his immutability. He cannot lie. Everything he speaks is the truth. And for someone to say that the mitzvah are not uh, a validation of the man of God, they're sick and full of demons. They're sick and full of demons. You can speak against me, that's all right. You found speaking against him, you're in trouble. You can speak against your ark and get it right, but you can't get it right when you blaspheme the ark. And you're criticizing to this most vile spirit today and say it's the Ruach. And when those that have it, they are disobedient unto the Torah. They don't even regard the Shabbat. They have no honor for his name. Come on, Yisrael. Come on, people. We got to get this thing right. We're playing around too long. He will guide us into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall shemach here. Where is the volume of the Ruach coming from? It has, it has been spoken already. He speaks according to the volume of the Torah. He hears the Torah speaks from the written inward parts of Yisra'ya. You're the voice. Yoshua is the living Torah. He is. You reject Torah, you reject Yahshua. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said that he shall speak. And he will show you things to come in the distant, in the future. We are a people barren. 
We don't even prepare for tomorrow. We don't even know what's uh, about to take place. Now yet all of these so-called men of the cloth, they are. And yet the people are not preparing for the thing that is most urgent in this hour. He will show us, he will open up uh, the very visions of our Zohan spoke to us about. Uh, will open up the visions of Yah, whereby we as a nation, where there is no vision, the people fell. So we will not fall, we will not fall. We will not fall to the violence of death. We will not fall unto the, uh, unto the power of sin, the prince of the power of the air, Yisrael. We need the Ruach of Yah. He shall magnify and honor Yahshua. The Ruach did not Yah magnify the Son. He said, this is my Son who I am well pleased in. Did he not raise him from the belly of the earth, Yisrael? Death, hell, and even the grave could not even hold him down. And that's what the Ruach does. It gives us insight of the power of that testimony. The strength of Yah's ability to quicken us, to make us alive, to chaya, to sustain the life and the living substance of Torah in our shat, our bosom. We need that in the midst of this corrupt world. We need that. Above all things, Yisraya, hallelujah. He shall magnify me, yeah? For he shall receive from the testimony of whom I am what is mine. And he shall show it to you. He shall reveal. He shall make known unto us, Yisraya, the power of Torah. Because the Torah, the word, the Daba of Yah was made flesh. And we beheld the splendid, the very beauty, the magnitude of Yah in the begotten of the one from his shot, his bosom, from his heart. Did not the Torah proceed out of the mouth of Yah? Your shoe proceeded out of the mouth of Yah from the bosom of Yah. He is what caused all things to be created. The word was spoken. Your shoe is the Torah. You deny Torah, you deny him. This is a convoluted generation. You raise up the true messengers. We have such weak, jelly back men of no substance today. They really don't care about Yah. So they have limited time for him anyway. And there is no truth that inspires the heart and to bring the conviction of Yah. That we move with fear and trembling uh, and working out our nefesh, our yashak, our deliverance uh, through the wisdom of the Torah of Yah. We must do that, Yisrael. We have to. Hallelujah. In all things, verse 15, in all things that the Abba has a mind. That is why I said... That he shall take a mine. Everything that Yah has, Yahshua says, it is mine. Because I am his, he is mine. And so the Ruach will take nothing but what is of the Abba. And this, the Torah, is of the Abba. So it takes from nothing, speaks nothing, but what is out of the Torah. That is the truth, Yisraya. We as a nation, we have been hoodwinked with every kind of religious practice. Just like Yisraya, we got to get back on the highway that leads unto the Merchut, the kingdom of Yah. And we began to walk in the knowledge of his revelation. We must, Yisraya. All things that are the Abba Aman, that is why I said he shall take he shall receive of me, and he shall show it to you. He shall show us. Uh, he shall cause us to be fashioned by the power of the testimony of the Torah. He shall us. Uh, he shall cause it to be accomplished in us. That's what the Ruach does. 
The Ruach comes to cause the living power of the Torah to be accomplished. He says, and he shall show it to you. He shall bring about the effective power, the effectiveness of Torah in Yisrael. He shall show us that he shall bring it to fruition. That the testimony of Yahshua, the powers of hell, as that we said, all this distress, he rises up and he has confidence in the pure word of Yah. We falter, don't we? I, I know I do. Hallelujah. And we falter, we, we fall, we're subdued. Come on, Yisrael. We need to get this thing real in us. We need to get this thing real in us. Yahweh is our Nacha, our Nacha. He's the one that guides and governs us. He has already prepared the way. It is not a way that is being prepared. He has already established the way. He has already done that yesterday. Yeah? Quickly in the book of Shema, in the book of Exodus. I want to read this quickly. Let me show you how the Ruach of Yah guides us yesterday. Yeah? Hallelujah. That's why we can sing the song of Moshe. We as a nation of people. Hallelujah. Jolomo says here in Exodus chapter 15, uh, verse 13. He identifies the great I am. He says the great higher. Hallelujah. He says you, yeah, in your hasset or your very faithfulness of kindness. Your pity toward us, your tender mercies, your love toward Yisrael. He says, in your mercy, you have led forth. Yah has led. Did he lead them? Did he guide them? Was he the one guiding them? Did Yahshua say that the Ruach would guide us? Is it Yah that's guiding us? Sure is. It is his mind, his conscience. He said, you have led forth the people whom you have ga'al, whom you have redeemed. Was not your sure the kinsman payment for Yisra'ah? That is what the ga'al is. The kinsman's price of payment. Just like Ruth and Boaz. He says, you have ga'al. Your sure is our kinsman redeemer. He has paid the price. Your sure pay it all for me. He has paid the price, Yisra'ya. He says here, you have Nahal. You have guided us. You have given us a place to rest. Naha, Nahal. You have guided us. You have given us a place to rest. We rest in the beauty of Torah. That's where we rest, Yisrael. We have our Shabbaton. That's what rest is. It is a Shabbaton. And that is what the Shabbat is. It is the time of rest, a Shabbaton. And so we have a Shabbaton in the Torah of Yah. We rest. You have Nahal. You have guided us, and that's what the Ruach does. It shows that there's a tremendous laboring and a battle in, 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 in our minds, in our physical being, our spiritual being against the powers of hell, isn't it? So the Ruach guide us that we may rest in the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. We may rest there and rejoice with great delight. Hallelujah. He says, uh, them in your uzo, or in your might, or your strength, to your chodash dwelling. In your shua, we live, we move, we have our being. We find our nachal. It is a place whereby you rest and you wore it. We get the chance to drink the living water, the nachal. It's a place, it's a place of guidance. Yah guides us. He calls us to rest. And we come to the place of the water wells. The Ruachim, the seven Ruachim of Yah. We come to the place of the water well where we are watered. We're refreshed. We're revived. Isn't that what water does? It quickens us and makes us alive. 
Now let us drink from the living system of Yah. And that's where the Ruach leads us. The living world. Not a dead system of sin. Where sin is perpetrated. Where sin. There's an active activity of sin there. No. No, you still don't got it. No, sir. In the heart, he guides us, brings us to the living well, to the systems of water. We drink, we feel, as a liveliness, we're revived. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that, you know, I have people writing me. How do you know that? In some of the books you read out of, that it is the truth. I had one to write me the other day. It's, it's almost, it is so juvenile now that this is a nation of people that thinks that it knows everything, but it is, doesn't know anything at all. It is one thing that truth does. It separates us from our own will. If you continue in the Torah of Yah, you will be disciplined. That's what Yahshua said. You are my disciples. He said, my disciples indeed. If you continue, if you walk, if you halach, your striding, your, your tenacity is driven by what the Torah says. He said, then you shall yada. You shall experience the wisdom of truth. You shall yada imat. He says, and that imat, it brings you out of the captivity of your shibu, and you shall be made you shall be free. And that is one thing that the enemy has tried to do to keep us away from uh, truth. The wisdom of Yah's mind is what truth is. I love the way that Ezra speaks here. Listen to this. In the book of Ezra, third Ezra. Hallelujah. The same thing that Dawid said about his anguish and his troubles, he speaks about Yisrael. In the days of great agony, of great trouble, in the czar, the tribulation is a czar. It is a time of our minds being per perplexed. And the activities and the function of our mind will not function unless we have the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. And he speaks unto us so profoundly in the book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 74. Listen to this. He says, uh, he says, uh, as Yah speaks, Yah says, Shemach O you, my beloved. Says Yah. This is what he says. He says, I want you to understand, behold, the Yam, the day of great trouble, or the day of trouble, are uh, those days, they are at hand. They are at hand. He says, but I, Yah says, but I will uh, deliver you uh, from the same. Did he not deliver thy weed? Did he not trust in the Torah of Yah? We must trust in the living Torah. That's what we need, the Ruach of Yah. He said, I will deliver you the same. He says, do not be afraid. Be you not afraid. And neither doubt. Don't doubt. Don't doubt, Yah. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Don't doubt, Yah. He says, for Yah, for Yah is your Nachal. He is your guide. It is best that I go away for the power of Yah among his nature of people and the light that shall be upon them. We are the light of the world. We are city that sit upon a hill that cannot be hid, Yisra'ya. He said, Yah's our guide. And so he has breathed the power of his breath in us to guide us in his mind. It is the mind of Yah that guides us. He said, for Yah... For Yah, for Yah, for Yah is your God, your Nahal. He is the one that brings you to the place of water and to drink of the, of the living water of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the guide, the Ruach is the guide. And the guide of them who Shema, who keep my mitzvah. He is the guide of them that keep his commandments. When one walk in disobedience, it is according to the prince of the power of this world. He said, he is the guide of them that keep my commandments. Not only my commandments, 
He said, but my hook or my precepts, says Yah Almighty. He said, let not your sin weigh you down. Don't let your sin trouble you. Don't let it overtake you. Don't let your sin. I like this. If you don't understand this is true, something is wrong with you. I, I, don't, need no, I don't need no prophet to tell me this is, this is not true. It is the truth. It is our sin that oppressed us. He said, don't let your sin. This is Yah speaking. Let not your sin weigh you down. He said, and let not your, of on your iniquity, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Don't even let your defiance. What is iniquity? It is a defiance of the Torah. Don't let that even lift you up. He said, woe be to them that are bound with their sin, and they cover their iniquity like a field is covered with the, the bushes. And the path thereof covered with thorns. We know what the thorns, Joshua spoke about the thorns. How that they choke out the Torah or the power of the living Torah of Almighty Yah. They're covered with thorns that no man, no man can even travel. No one can ask for reason of tikva from that mind. No man, no man, not even the man you are sure can operate in that mindset. Don't let your sins, Yisrael, Yah. We have sinned and fallen short of the wisdom and the beauty of Yah. Let's get up. Let's allow the Ruach to judge us and show us the damnation of our ways and the corruption of our ways. Get up and go take a bath. Let Yah guide you to the watering place, to the fuller's house, and get clean up. That's what you need to do. Get clean up. Let's get our butt up to our bodies washed and clean, Yisra'ya. That's all we need to do. No pity party. Hallelujah. 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 It's one thing that Yah has done for his people. That we must understand, Yisraya, there's no power of renewing. Sometimes we're down, aren't we? And so when there's a liveliness of the Ruach or the Spirit, it causes us to rise up, doesn't it? It causes this Britzmila or this renewing, this, this cutting away of the flesh. And so the only way that Yah can, uh, can renew his covenant with Yisra'ya is through the power of the Ruach. That's why the enemy keeps us from being filled with the Ruach. He wants us to walk in disobedience. disobedience. And there was a nobi that spoke of this so profoundly in the book of Yeskel, Ezekiah. He spoke of this, Ezekiah, chapter 36, verse 27. Hallelujah. 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 Your says that Yisra'ya is my was not your shoe filled with the ruach without measure. So shall Yisra'ya. Yes, scale says he Ezekiel 36:27. Uh, Yah says, I will put, I will no fun, I will bestow, I will put my ruach. He says, Kerep within. The inward, the inner parts, the inner parts of the mind. I will put Maruach within, hallelujah, within you. He said, for what reason? I will cause you to yalach, to walk in my hookah, in my statues, what I prescribe. It is spirit that does not cause us to walk in the statutes of Yah. It is because it is not the Ruach of Yah. You can't keep those laws. You can't guard them. It takes something greater than us. We know we're weak. That's why that we say, let the weak say, I'm weak, Yah. That's all he talked about, how weak he was. Let the weak say, I'm strong. I have the Ko'ach. The uz, the might, the strength, the power of Omar Yah. He says, and you, and you, Yisra'ya, shall keep my mishpatim and do them. You shall keep the judgments of Yah. Does not the Ruach, first of all, judge us and bring us into the mishpatim? He said, you shall keep my judgment. And not only that, you shall do them. You shall asa. You shall accomplish what my judgments say, my instructions. You shall perform it to the till, to the till. Every, every word of it. He says, Then, and you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your avat, and you shall be my people, and I shall be your avat. That's what the Ruach comes to do, to let us know we're the people of Yah. 
And that's why the enemy has worked so ferociously to get us with the pop, pop, top, 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 pop, daddy talk, you know. Hallelujah. When the rock was poured out, they spoke of the languages of the Medes uh, and, the, and all those that were of Mesopotamia. They spoke in a language that was understood. I'm not saying that the Ruach doesn't cause us to talk in languages that we don't understand. But this mess that we have seen, the pop, 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 ta, ta, lay your tongue back and just gargle. That's not the Ruach of Yah. You think that that's the function of the mind of Yah, something so wickedly petty and so fleshly motivated? They take them back to their little room to say, lay your tongue, just go little, 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 little. That's not Yad Yisra, Yah. We have been ignorant of the devices of the powers of, of hell. That's why the true messengers have no time to procrastinate. We must diligently labor to understand the simplicity of the rewards of Yah's people and open up the wisdom of that. Hallelujah. I'm looking like you too, all right? I'm looking. I'll, I'll be finishing a few, all right? Hallelujah. I'm looking at the clock. You always oh, trying to see what time it is. I, 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 will, I, will, I will finish on time. All right. All right. Hallelujah. I didn't feel like preaching tonight. I was going to call everything off. I didn't want to come here. But that's all right. You see? Hallelujah. And then when I saw that man, I heard the car. I saw man. I saw the head my insurance to call. I said, but I know they've left. So that man messed me up. You understand? Him. And so when I saw that come, I said, oh, man. I didn't even call him because I saw him coming. That's the truth. Because I said to you, uh, let's see what I can do, all right? But that's all right. Y'all knows what we have need of. And that's all right. Let me move quickly here. Hallelujah. 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 Turn quickly to the book of Yokohana and John, first, first John. This is the sure way that you know that one has the Ruach. That's why this contrary talk against Yah, these individuals have not the Ruach of Yah. This is what, this is what the, the, the writing of the Torah speaks unto us, first John 3 and verse 23. Hallelujah. The messenger of Yah. He says, and this is his great mitzvah. The singular, this is the greatest mitzvah of Yah. That we shall believe on the name of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. And love one another. And as he gave us mitzvah. He goes on to say, and he that keeps his mitzvah. The instructions of Yah. He dwells. In the Abba. And the Abba. By the power of the testimony of Yeshua. In him. And hereby. Listen. Hereby we yada. That we abide. That he abides in us. By the Ruach. Which he has given us. If we do not keep the mitzvah of Yah. His commandments. If the Torah is not the strength of our government then we know that Yah is not dwelling in us at all, Yisra'ah. It is the deception from hell. It is the trickery of darkness. The Ruach does not cause us to disobey the mitzvah of the commandments and the instructions of Yah. It causes us to delight in it because it is what develops and carry out the will, the purpose of Yah, that he delights in us, Yisra'ah. We are the sons of Yisra'ah. And just like he said to Yahshua, this is my beloved, he's going to say it unto true Yisra'ah. I please in you. Hallelujah. That is the truth, Yisra'ah. This is a nation we are people that we have sold the truth for what? For nothing. And one by the name of Shalom, oh, he speaks. Solomon, he speaks. So profoundly. Hear this quickly. In the book of Mishli, Proverbs. Hallelujah. Proverbs 23, 23. I have a few more verses that I'm going to close. I'm going to do that. We take the same steps that my Zachain, my leader, he takes. All right. If he's obedient, I must be obedient. How about that? Look at what Shalom says. He says, Ba, I want you to 
to buy truth. You need to possess. He say, buy the truth. And we know what the truth is. We must get. We must acquire truth. He say, buy truth and sell it not. Also the chukhna, the wisdom of Yah's mind to discern and to know. We must that. He says also muza, instructions, correction, his counsel. And also we must buy bina or bin understanding, the wisdom of Yah. Wisdom is the principal thing. But in all our getting, we must get understanding of the Torah. We must get that, Yisra'i. And the only way we get that is by the power of the Ruach. And no man, this is a sure sign that when one disavow themselves to the, to the mitzvah, the commands of Yah, you know they have not the ruach of Yah. I don't care how they jit, 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 ta, ta. I don't care how much they say they love. I don't care how much they give to the poor. I don't care how much they say they have not the ruach of Yah. I don't care how, how beautiful you may perceive they are, they have not the ruach of Almighty Yah. The wisdom of Yah speaks uh, in Shulomo again in the book of wisdom. Uh, I find this to be so uh, indicative uh, of the very mind of the Ruach of Yah and the wisdom. He says in the book of wisdom chapter 3 verse 9, uh, he says this, They that put their botak, their trust in Yah, in Him, shall understand the Torah, the truth. This is a generation that doesn't trust Yah. It doesn't but with confidence, trust, with fullness of heart. He said they shall understand truth. Then he gives us a, a description of that individual. He says, and such as uh, be faithful uh, in love uh, shall abide in him. Those that love, uh, he is the greatest mitzvah, is what Yachahan said. Uh, he is the greatest mitzvah. He said those that love him abide in him. Uh, for his free unmerited pardon, love and mercy is only or is to his kiroshim, to the elect of here, Yah's people. And he watches and he cares for his elect. He cares for us. That's why he cannot give us the Holy Ghost. He must give us the Ruach. That's why he can't just give us a spirit. He must give us the Ruach, Yisra'ya. He watches. And he cares for his elect. Nahan. He has pity. He cares for us. Well, there's no constitution to that. Well, Shirak speaks with the great constitution of this wisdom out of the, out of the volume of Shulomo's breath. Shirak. And I'm going to close from Isaiah. All right. But I'm going to read this in Shirak quickly. All right. Shirak. Chapter 4, verse 25. He says, never speak against. He did not say truth, but he says, the truth. The truth. Never speak against it. Never speak against the truth. That's what he says. Well, how do you know that that is truth, what he says? Well, Daiwi said that, that your Torah is the truth. Ha ima. Did he say that? Ima ha? Did he not say that? Yes. He said that. Did he say that? Yes. Shrak. This is the constitution of stability uh, and beauty of the wisdom that is true. He says, never speak. Even as an ignorant man, when I didn't understand things, I never spoke against it. I left it alone because I didn't want to be in trouble. I didn't want to find myself in trouble with the Most High. I left it alone. I said, wow, that's it. And I would search and see tibbets in the Torah. I'd say, well, it has some truth to it, what he said. He said, never speak against the truth. But be abashed of the error of your ignorance. Say, I'm just ignorant. Do you hear me say that? So I'm just an ignorant man. I, I don't know. Hallelujah. That's the way that Yah wants us. Don't ever speak against the truth. And there are fools that are speaking against the Torah today. Be not ashamed to confess your sins. And force not the course of the river. You don't try to take a river and alter it. Yah has laid it out. He has laid out the Torah. The Ruach doesn't try to change the course of the Torah. He said never change the course of the river. Do not. 
subject yourself uh, as an underlying uh, to a foolish man. Don't even submit to a man that is foolish, that speaks not out of the Torah. Don't even listen to a fool like that. Say, man, get out of my face. Don't even try to, don't even try to digress with a man. Like, say, man, get out of my face. I don't want to hear that fool. Neither accept the person of the mighty with partiality. It says this, Shrak 428, strive with all that's in you, even to the death for the truth. You strive. Should we not strive to enter in at the street and then arrogate the gate of truth? The Ru'ak leads us to that gate and brings us there. Strive with all that's in you, even to the death for truth. For the truth of Yah, the Almighty One, will fight for you. When you strive for truth, he'll fight for you. Don't worry about that. He fights our battle. You just strive for the truth. When you strive for the truth, he will fight. I don't have the ability to fight. But he will fight. You strive for the truth. Strive ye to enter in at the straight gate. We must strive with all diligence, with all effort, with all might, with all substance, with all will. We must strive to enter in, Yisraya. We must strive to the death for truth. You don't sit around a foolish man and he, he speak against Yah's Torah. You don't allow him to do that. You don't allow him to abase the name of Yah. His Shabbat, you don't do that. Get out of my man. Get out of my face. No, I can't get real raunchy when it comes to that. Help me. Uh, you're in trouble with me, all right. The most profound mission of Yahshua is described here in the writings of Yeshaya, Isaiah. I want to read this to us quickly, and I shall close my zakhim. It says in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1, it says, Behold, my servant. He's talking about Yeshua. He's talking about Yisra'ya. Are we not the servant of Yah? Did not Yeshua prevail? Is not the name Yisra'ya he that prevails against the powers of hell? We're not surplanters. That's why he changed his name from to Yisra'ya. He says, Behold, my Emmet. I serve in Yeshua. I serve in Yisra'iyah. Whom I lift up, I sustain. He keeps us. He upholds. He says, my bochir, my choice one, my elect, the one I have chosen by my wisdom. In whom, Yah says, listen, my delight, my nephesh, my being, my nephesh, hafith, delights, I rejoice in Yisra'iyah. We are weak, but he's still rich. He said, I will send the Ruach. Yeshua said, I'm going to pray. He's going to send the Ruach because he delights in you. He says, I have put nothing, my Ruach upon, it has come upon him. He put his Ruach upon Yeshua, didn't he? He poured out before the masses. And he says, he shall bring forth, this is what the Ruach does. He shall bring forth judgment to the nations. And he is not talking about the Goyim. He's not talking about just the nations or the heathens. He's talking about the scattered seed of Yisrael. The four corners. That's why when the Ruach comes. He comes to make judgment. And the righteousness of the Torah of Yah. He shall not. He shall not make his voice. Listen now. He shall not. Nor lift up. Nor cause his voice to be whole, heard in the hoods. Almost like hood, isn't it? In the streets. Outside. Those that are outside of Yisrael. He said, he shall not cause his voice to be heard in the hoods. Outside. He come to bring judgment to the, those that are in the bosom of Yah. Before the foundations of the earth, that's the truth. A bruise or a rasa, he was crushed, discouraged, forsaken. He is a bruise, 
chanef a reeds shall not be he shall not break he shall not uh, he, he shall not break now one of his bones were broken he shall not shiva he shall not even through all the violence he shall not rend and we don't render the torah of yah's truth even through the violence of opposition we don't do that he shall not break he says he shall be a smoking flat shall not be quenched he shall bring forth judgment according to what the truth and that's what the ruach does it brings forth judgment according to truth let us know that you don't want to go that way the prince is already judged may the riches of yah rest upon you all your sure mighty name may he strengthen us all yisraya we do pray that azakin uh, yaramaya will say the simple truth uh, your heart embrace it and maybe a great strength to you i did not feel like preaching but that's all right Yah knows all things you that have joined us we greet you all from uma to shua victory community may yah's riches rest upon you we do hope that the simple truth will be a great inspiration to you tonight hallelujah may cause your heart to uh, to rejoice we need to understand the simple things uh, and i didn't curse tonight as some of you would say all right i did that purposely that's all right i did that purposely hallelujah hallelujah may yah's riches rest upon you all in yahshua's mighty name as my zah came with a letter stand to our feet all right hallelujah <laughs> All right, as we turn toward Yerushalayim. In all things we do, Barach, you are Abba for your mercy, your kindness, your tenderness. We ask you to take our Zachin Shimri, his Isha down the road safely, and our Chot Jennifer, and also our Chot Blunt and the children. Watch over us here and those that have joined us on the live broadcast. Strengthen. We ask in your Shua's name. Even our enemies, we Barach you for all of them. We pray for them, Yah. We have fed them, they are hungry. We have fed them with bread, with lechem. Your Shua's mighty name, fill us, Yah, with your ruach and your Shua's mighty name. For we need the power of your witness in us above all things in this hour, in this nation especially. We pray for Yisra scattered to the four corners of the earth that you touch and strengthen, heal them, your rafaras upon us all. And we ask it all in the most magnificent, magnanimous name given, the name of Yoshua HaMashiach. We rock you with our hearts and with our voices. We cry, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ya Yisra'ya.